I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I'm free. For his eyes, his eyes, his smile. Let's sing that chorus together. I say, Yes, prosperity may include money, but it's beyond money. 
And if you have the money, it is not to be spent on pleasure. It's not to be lavish to, to just live big. No. So that's the error. The third error is where they now begin to use the desire to prosper to collect money from people. By telling them if you can drop 10,000 naira today in 24 hours, God will multiply it to 100,000. How many of you want to drop it? Begin to run to the altar. <laughs> I saw somebody was going to run this evening. <laughs> that is the error. But the truth is that God wants us to prosper. And tonight, He told me He's releasing the power to prosper. We will sing the whole night in the mighty name of Jesus. In this scripture that we read, the Bible says God Himself desires. His desire is that we should prosper. And be in health. And that our soul should prosper. What is the meaning of prosperity? Prosperity actually means to succeed. So does God not want us to succeed? He wants us to succeed. Prosperity means to do well. Does God not want us to do well? He wants us to do well. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to do well in every endeavor of life. You know, God himself is a prosperous God. Everything God does, he succeeds. Has God ever been? He's a prosperous God. Everything God does is successful. Everything he does, everything God puts his hand upon, he goes well. So every child of God should be the same. In fact, even the word of God, Isaiah 55 verse 11, Isaiah 55 verse 11, he says, so shall my word be that word for that of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I send it to. Anything God sends his word to do, the word prosper, he succeeds in doing it. That's why I have this confidence that the word that is going for this evening is going to prosper in your life. This word he is going to turn those who are collected today to become contributors in the mighty name of Jesus. God desires that his children prosper in everything that they do. That's what we read in that passage. It is his desire. So if God desires something for me, I also need to desire it. When the two desires meet together, then there will be a result. So I want you to desire prosperity. That's why I started by sharing my testimony. I tell you for a long time, I don't care about money. And you know, many times you start talking, I say, no, I don't need money. I just don't need it. Even as a pastor, by the time I even go to the future ministry, I say, no, 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 I don't need money. Until I started realizing that as a pastor, I will go to church. They want to buy a plot of land, and I don't have money in my pocket. And I'm like, what well, if I had this money? You know, I would pay. I'm not looking for money to build houses, so if you give me the money, I will pay for this thing. I, we want to go for a program. There's no vehicle to go. Oh God, if I had a car now, I would just load everybody inside this car. So one day when some brethren in my church, the first church and pastor came to me and said, they were asking me tiny stylish, I didn't know. They said, uh, if you have money, what type of car? I said, I want a bus. And he said, what do you do with bus? I said, ah, pastor, I need bus. So that wherever we are going, I just pack people. It's not because of my wife and children. I need a bus. He said, hey, okay, apart from bus, which as if it's not a bus, then it should be a car that is a wagon with enough space. That I can put speakers, load equipment. And you know, when they wanted to go and buy me a car, they went to buy a pair of wagons. Some of you remember a pair of wagons. Big thing. So I was supposed to the village after that. They will sit in the, in the car. I will carry five in the front, six in the middle. Some of them will enter the boots. I will crusade, will tie speakers on top of the roof of the car. I know many of you are sitting here. If you have money, you will give it for the work of God. Yes, Begin to desire that money. Yes, 
begin to desire that prosperity. Prosperity is good to the kingdom of God, but you must desire it. Remove that mentality of no, 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 no. The, the Bible didn't say money is the root of evil. It said the love of money. You don't love money, but I love God. And I need money to, to serve God. I need money to serve God. As I'm standing here, if you give me 100 million naira, it will not last one month in my pocket. I had a list of more than 70 towns and villages in Venice that would love a parish of the religious Christian Church of God. And I'm looking for 5 million naira to plant a church in any of those places. If God is needing you to bring 5 million naira, please see me after the service. Shout hallelujah. Prosper you academically. 
which you are someone that is still in the academics. We have examples in the Bible. We don't have the time to read them, but I just pointed to you. These are things you know. Daniel. Daniel in Daniel chapter 1, verse 17 to 21. The Bible says, because God prospered Daniel and his friends academically, they were 10 times better. 10 times better. God is able to prosper you and continue coming. I'm sure you remember that the Jew always challenges students. You make sure they are the best. Because you have the Holy Ghost inside you. If you are a youth or you are an adult, you are going to school. In fact, for adults, it's even worse. You adult, you can't go to school and then you fail. And then come and tell your children at home that you fail. So God must prosper you at the day as an adult. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, sometimes we read scriptures and we don't see some things. The Acts chapter 6, 8 to 10, Acts 6, 8 to 10, talk about stealing. I always saw stealing purely from the spiritual side. But when you read stealing, the stealing, you see, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. That guy was not just anointed, he was intelligent. He was arguing with intellectuals. And when they couldn't out argue him, they stoned him to death. <laughs> you say that was a, it was not a bad thing. It was not a bad thing. Since I'm talking about religion, you see, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Is that not? Yes, but when Stephen was dying and his eyes were open, what did he see Jesus do? He saw Jesus standing. The kind of people you stand to welcome. <laughs> If a great man stands to welcome someone under him, that person must have done great things. Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, already seated. Stephen should have just come and prostrated, but when Stephen arrived heaven, Jesus stood up. I want to enter heaven like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was intelligent, he was successful academically, professionally. If you're a professional in anything at all, God wants to prosper you in that profession. Again, I say, when you read Bible scriptures like the story of Joseph, Joseph was a servant. Who is a servant? Today we can say civil servant, public servant, servant, and servant. Shall I do it? So you are the same league with Joseph, employed in the house of his master. But the Bible said that, and his master, Genesis 39, verse 3, Genesis 39, verse 2 and 3, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Remember, Joseph was a slave. He didn't have money. But the Bible said he was prosperous. What's the meaning of that? Everything they did, any assignment you gave him, you will come back and say, wow. <laughs> if Joseph is asked to sweep, by the time he finished sweeping, when you look at the place, the glory of God will be radiating in that place. He will send Joseph to the master and say, ah, ah, this guy is just different. That is supposed to be your story. And if you want to receive it now, you might name of Jesus. How about Daniel? We remember Daniel more, more as a prophet. But Daniel was a public servant. He was working for the king. He was like an officer of the government. And the, the Bible said, <laughs> there was a day there was commotion. Daniel chapter 5, 11 and 12. Daniel 5, 11 and 12. There was trouble in the land. A handwriting on the wall, nobody could understand. That is a representative of a problem no one can solve. The king was troubled when his mother told him, there is a man here who is to help your father. Go and call him to solve the problem. When you become the kind of person that when there is trouble and you don't know what to do, they send for you. Then you know you have begun to prosper professionally. Receive that now in the mighty name of Jesus. And when I say that, I always like to explain. Today is the time to preach, so let me preach. You know, Mechanics, carpenters, builders, all those professions, you know, a lot of times we don't respect them. 
But I'm telling you, even in this market, if you are a good mechanic, you will have a problem. Your problem will be that every day cars will just be lined up in your workshop. Those who have cars, you will try this one, try that one, try that one. Why? Excellence is lacking. If you are a child of God and you are anointed and you are with integrity and you are excellent at what you do, it doesn't matter what it is, you prosper there. If you are a carpenter, just carpenter, people don't value those things. Carpenter, if you know your job. <laughs> so if you are a child of God and you are any of those spirits, go and seek excellence. What did I say? Go and seek excellence. I already mentioned financial prosperity, so I don't need to, I don't need to dwell on it. Because that's where I started. First Corinthians 16, verse 1. First Corinthians 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, so do ye. Verse 2. Upon the first week, First day of the week, let every one of you lay by, lay by him in stock, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Paul was saying that God has already prospered you. So give according to your level of prosperity. You see, what that means is that the church in the early days was a prosperous church. Say everybody give as God has prospered you. And when you read further, he says, as you give, that is how you will be prospered in the more. So God starts by prospering you. As you give for his work, he prospers you more. As you do use it for his work, he prospers you more. He will keep prospering you. Because he has work for you to do. God wants to prosper you mightily. I won't dwell on that because yesterday we talked to those areas. I just want you to understand that prosperity is broad. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to succeed. So when you turn left, you succeed. You turn right, you succeed. You go forward, you succeed. You turn back, you succeed. Your, your, your prosperity should not be a one-sided prosperity. It should not be the kind of prosperity of a man that like Neyman that they describe how great he was and say, but he was a leper. In the area of health, he was not prosperous. God wants to prosper, even as your soul prospers, prosper and be in health. And be in health. Prosperity of the soul, prosperity of the spirit, prosperity of the body. God wants you to prosper ministerially. I hope the pastors in the house are listening now. Luke chapter 12 verse 32. Luke 12 verse 32. Fear not, little frog, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. When Jesus was addressing the disciples, what did he call them? He called them little frog. But when you get to Acts chapter 2 verse 41, Acts chapter 2 verse 41, in one day Peter preached 3,000 souls came to Christ. At that point, you can't call them little frog anymore. Acts chapter 2 verse 47, Acts 2 verse 47, the Bible said God was adding to the church daily, 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 as people will be saying, daily. Acts chapter 4 verse 4, Acts chapter 4 verse 4, on that day, 5,000 came in one day, 5,000 souls. <laughs> I don't think the entire population of Bible is one, is after 5,000, the entire population of Bible is one. So if 5,000 people come to Christ in one day, we just create a new promise. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. The Bible says the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. I will finish reading all these things and then. Acts 12 verse 24. Acts 12 verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Acts 19 verse 20. Acts 19 verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We're talking about ministerial prosperity. That power is going to be released upon us today. Yeah. So pastors begin to desire 
enlightenment. I need to also talk about that because I know there are some of us who were brought up the way I was brought up. We say, no, 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 no. What God is looking for is quality, not quantity. Who said it? Where did you read that in the Bible? I didn't find it in the Christian. I believed it before. I preached it before, but I didn't find it in the scripture, so I stopped. If he was looking for quality, he would bring 3,000 people in one day. He would bring 5,000 in another day. He wants both quality and quantity. Oh, God is interested in quality, yes. He's interested in quantity as well. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Is that not quantity? He wants everyone to be saved. They say, oh, no, even if I have 10, 10 people in my church, I they make it to heaven, I'm okay. No. What about the rest of the world? Stop being satisfied with a little church. Stop being sanctimonious and, uh, and holy holy about it. No, no. In our church, we want to make it to heaven. Who doesn't want to make it to heaven? We are to carry as many people as possible with us. Yes, don't sacrifice quality for quantity. I believe the people who preach that, that's what they are trying to say. Sometimes I want to balance scriptures. Don't sacrifice quality for quantity. But don't also abandon quantity. God wants both quantity and quality. You can imagine if we have multitudes in this land. No? I've been away from this land for a long time, so some things are a little bit surprising to us. The other day I was with my brother and we went around the Urupo market here and I turned one corner to park, to reverse. And I saw people sitting, drinking beer, and I was like, hey, this man, you have not stopped this thing. Even when the beer palace shut down and become churches, but you know, so don't complain, hey, you need to go to the mystery, this church, the church is talk. Uh-uh, is that a problem? What you should be complaining about is that the church here is their body, the church here is Hannah Town, the church here is that, that is what should stop. That should be our desire. That these people drinking with, with drunk it each other. On Sunday morning, one day here in this church, while Sunday school was going, I just thrown down this environment. And I found boys just roaming around. One gathered, some gathered with sticks with looking for mango to eat on Sunday morning. And I was asking them, don't you go to church? They said they, they, they go to church. Where is your church? They mentioned their church. Why are you not going? What I was saying, you didn't have offering. I said, come, my own church, you don't need offering. You don't have offering. You know, the other one said, he's still going to go, but uh, he wants to. I said, where will you go? He's not at the time. You have never had your back. They don't go to church. We want them saved. Shout hallelujah. God wants to prosper of me to desire. All I've been trying to say so far is I want to create a hunger for prosperity in your heart. I want to create a desire for prosperity in your heart. Because God wants you to prosper. Now that you have agreed with me, I hope you have agreed with me actually. The how what are the conditions for prosperity? God already gave one of the conditions to Joshua. In Joshua 1, verse 7 and 8. Joshua 1, 7 and 8. Observe to do what is in the law. Study the Bible, meditate on it, practice it. I know anytime we say things like that, you say, ah, is that all? Have you done it? Have you actually, he said, let this word, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. That's what he said. He should not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. Then you will observe to do what is written. Then you will have prosperity. I don't know for sure. We don't read this word as much as we should. Thank God for open heavens and other devotionals and Facebook and WhatsApp. Every morning you get there from different, different places. 
In five minutes, you are giving me everything. Have you not? Then you watch uh, videos. Then you watch funny, funny skits. Then you check Facebook. What a joke, 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 blah, 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 blah. TikTok, blah, 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 blah. Then news. Then you go to politics. Then you go to ABC, uh, PDP, Obedience. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Then fill your entire day with it. Now you talk about junk. <laughs> I borrowed it from you. <laughs> Listen, brethren. Go back to what the Bible says. If you are a child, and you ask some people say, they even accuse us at the point. They say, some of you, it's something by the Bible, by the Bible. Ah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't read other books, but you see, we are not studying this word of God enough. You know why? We immerse yourself in the world. That is where inspiration comes. Sometimes as you are immersed in the word of God, inspiration for things around you begin to come. What you should do begins to come. What you should not do begins to come. Your business, you are busy studying the word, meditating on the word. Then the God will begin to give you inspiration in your business. He will begin to give you inspiration in your minds. He will give you inspiration in different, different things. Because what is the word of God? The word of God is God. As you study the word, meditate on it, immerse yourself in the word. You are getting connected to the source of life. Jesus said, The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. We, we value the word, but not yet much. And I'm talking to myself also. I've seen a little. When I immerse myself in the world, what to do is going to be a problem to me. Many of us are challenges. what do I do? What do I do? In your business, you are asking, what test do I do? I've tried everything. Go back and immerse yourself in the word of God. You know, one of those things I remember that I was praying to God for mercy. As a young student on campus, you know, in those days we didn't have what do you say, electronic Bibles. So, my table, I was Bible study secretary in Ivers. So when I'm studying, I'll put dates here, yeah? I'll put Thompson's chain reference here, yeah? I'll put King James Bible, I'll put a uh, uh, strong exhaustive customer components of the Bible here. Yeah? My table is filled with Bibles. I'm studying here, I'm comparing here, I'm studying here, I'm comparing here. There was one Muslim boy in my room, he used to be so afraid of me because. He looked at an engineering student at every time. So one day he carried my plastic bucket to one place and the bucket broke. Ah, he was so afraid. You know, they are not manners on the other side, they are very violent. So he thought I was going to be like that. And I was like, I was so hungry. The day God showed me that, see, when was the last? Now you have everything in your car. Because this thing you see in front of me has so many values, so many commentaries. When was it? back to it and I say, oh God, I'm sorry. You know, when you grow, you get to a point where, especially when you hear someone like me, you to preach and say, you see, uh, when I was a young Christian, when I was still a novice, what you are saying, in, in ignorantly, what you are saying, foolishly, is that you have become <laughs> So I to tell myself, oh boy, Stop telling yourself that when you were young, what are you now? Go back and still be thirsty for the word of God like that. Go back and still be hungry for the word of God like that. Go back and still begin to search, wanting to know. Because sometimes we get to a point with you, we now know the Bible. You don't know the word. Brethren, go back to the world. Especially pastors, go back, workers, ladies, go back to the world. Spend time in the word of God. The open heaven devotional is meant to guide you. It's not meant for you to just read through in two minutes and get away from there. Then God's presence. To prosper, you have to stay in the presence of God. In Genesis 39, verse 3, where we read earlier, Genesis 39, verse 3, it says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all he did 
prosper. Who made it to prosper? The Lord. How does the Lord make it to happen? The Lord will be with you. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. He himself was with the Lord. How can you ensure that the Lord is with you? You know, there is a sense in which God is with us. All of us, God is with us. And then there is God is with me. The Bible says, draw near, and he will draw near to you. I thought he was already near. So why is he asking me to draw near? I draw near. Then I will draw near. When I was there, I was singing that song. Near am I to near am I I was like, draw me near. Near am I going to say, you come near. So go and read what I wrote in my word. You come near, then I will come. Stop sitting there and say, come. You come. So I started studying. So how do I come? Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time in worship. You know these things I'm talking about, you know them. But we don't do them. But I want to talk about that tomorrow. Tomorrow is deliverance service. <laughs> and you know when they talk about deliverance service, what comes to everybody's mind is that demons. But let me tell you something. Anytime you discover that you know what to do, but you are not able to do it, you need deliverance. See you tomorrow on that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we know these things. Go back to the world. Go back to prayer. That's part of the reason for this week. The reason we are making this program one week. Because sometimes we come on Tuesday, brother, we go home. We come on Tuesday, Thursday. But at least if we stay in the presence of God for one week, some things will break permanently. Some fire will catch and not quench again. You must stay in the presence of God. Of course, you must work hard. You must work hard at what you do. You must work hard. A hard working man will be prosperous. Says here that my division is business. She has not stand before me, and she has stand before kings. You know that Proverbs 22, verse 39. I won't worry myself about that. You know about the law of sowing and reaping. That one too is not just in the area of money. Yes, in the area of money is very important. You to learn to be because if God is going to trust you with the words, He wants to see whether He gives you that word to be used for His work or for your own pleasure. You know, they say in Africa, when people get more money, they marry more wives. Okay. There are some believers, they will believe us. When more money comes, uh, they may not marry more wives, but, uh, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And if God knows that, he's not going to give it, he's not going to bring it in. He just wants you to go to heaven. <laughs> so, he will rather keep you poor and take you to heaven. That make you rich and you go to hell. So God will test you to see. You know, in those days, little children, you give them a part of your skill, then you ask for just one, and the child will put his hand at the back. Then another child will not come and snatch it from back his back, where he's hiding. You know, when I say, that's the way we behave, you know. If we will trust God to prosper us, then we should believe in Him enough to give what is in our hand. You see, that is the idea of give and it shall be given unto you. It's not, uh, it's not caru caru, it's not magic, like some preachers preach it. And they do that because they need to collect pastors from you. One pastor told me, he said, you pastor, you know the trick? The trick is that, don't give them long time. Tell them that if it's a program that is continued, tell them they must fulfill the work tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. If you give them too much time, they will think about it and they will not do it again. <laughs> That's how they deceive many of you. God have mercy on you, Lord. But learn the principle. The reason why the Bible says give and it shall be given unto you is that if God can trust you that if he gives you, it will be used for his kingdom, then he will definitely give you more. It's a simple thing. It's a simple There's no magic there. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Lord, as a young, young man, you know, when we are young, 
We have big, big faith. And it's very good. I see how it works. Young people can believe more. As you grow older, you begin to become reasonable, so to say. So as a young man, I will stand on the pulpit and I will say, look, the day is coming. I will be so rich, I will be donating cars to people. I will be clapping. I will be clapping. So I had one car. And God said, I should give it out. I said, no, uh, give me another one, then I will give it to you. I said, is it only you that have been preaching that uh, you will be giving out cars? You think, you think, how do you think it's going to start? Then I heard the Bible says, freely you receive, freely give also. When I heard that, I said, ah. There was a friend of mine who was one who wanted to buy the car for me. So I called him and said, come and take it. God said, I should give it to you. So I gave it to him and I trained for like four months. Uh-huh. Because you see, when he tell you, if I told you that I gave that car, and within two days, three more cars came. Some of you will drop your home for me outside. <laughs> You are not doing that because you love God. You are doing that because I told you that you are not. If it was like that, me too, I would drop the one I have now. So I can get a better one or more. So I tried for four months before another one came. The day God asked me to give that one out, I said, oh, no, 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 God, don't give it. Last time, I, I did it up. I tried for four months. I don't. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, I told you, give it out. I was not ready to risk it. I went and repaired the car, repaired it, put for sale on it. Do it around, do it around, nobody buys it. They know who will buy it. When they start to bring money, they will not bring it. The only thing is, I told you to go and give it. I told you the person to go and give it. So eventually, when I got tired, I drove the car, went and gave the owner and came back. This time around, he had this on me, I checked for three months. <laughs> another one came. But that, 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 another one came. So I had two. When I had two, I said, no, 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 no. I don't want two cars. So I gave one out. Praise the Lord. So now I can boldly say, a day is coming. I will dash my brand new car. <laughs> it's coming to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I've been tested. I've been tested. Learn to trust God if you are going to prosper. That's why I want to end. Father, help me communicate this. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Hear what will happen to the man. The summary of this is that he shall be prosperous. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreading out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. If you trust the Lord, you will prosper. You know, yesterday I mentioned the issue of debt. Part of the reason we borrow, quickly borrow, is that we, <laughs> if I say that, you will say, Pastor, you are not in my shoe. We don't trust Him. We don't trust Him. We don't trust him. Both for our personal lives and for the work of God. I don't have time because I want us to pray and time is going. I don't want us to be staying long. So I don't have students. But as a pastor, I have locked myself up and told God, God, this project, if it is me that is to do it, bring the money. If it's not me, Bring the person that you want to come and do. But I'm not going to do anything wrong. The very first time they made me parish pastor in the day, you know, our parish is usually for the two of us, have you? One of them, you know, another one for me. So I went, when they told me I'm going to be the parish pastor of the next parish, I went to the usher, head usher, asked him, I said, I want to see the records of offering in this our parish. How much did people give every month, every Sunday for project offering? When I saw it, 2,000, 3,000. <laughs> because God had told me, so when you go to start that church, be quality only one of them. Don't call it two of them. He said, don't call it project offering. He said, because when they contribute to project offering, the day you need money for project, they'll say, oh, we are giving project offering. What are they doing? For surprise, I God was telling me that. So I 
went to church. And I saw what they were going to say. Ah, now I know what God told me that. So I go to that church. So here, only one of them. No, they talk to all the workers. Eh? I'm not going to two of them. Eh? When they now say we should buy the land where we were, we have put a temporary stop to that. The owner just came and said, if we are not going to buy it, we should move out. I gathered the people in the church. The Holy Spirit told me, don't collect pledge. Don't collect back. Tell them and tell them how much you need. Tell them this is bring whatever God needs you to bring. So I gathered all the men, the women, I addressed them, told them. As I was talking with them, talking with them, one of the ladies I said, sister, my really good, good friend. My wife knows how they were. She whispered in my ear, she passed I can see the people are carried away with this thing. This is a good paper now, so that they can make vows, so that they can make pledges. I just said. So I finished and I told him, but someone God raises your hand, please bring it. And I left. Some of them came and said, No, 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 see, Pastor, in a situation like this, let's have delivered somebody, the rich people in the church, let's approach them. I said, We are not approaching anybody special. I have announced. One man. In those days, this was the year 2001. Yeah, 2001. He sent 80,000 naira cash. If I was listing the names of people to, that we should I talk to one by one, I will not include him. I will not have included him. After that, my eyes clear. I said, God. This is the very beginning. You have taught me a big lesson. As long as I remain alive in this work, I will follow your instructions. I will trust you. I will do, I won't use any method to raise funds that you didn't send me to do. He has not failed. You know, in many of you are looking at me and wondering, how are we going to do it? I don't know how we are going to do it. But God, who sent me, knows how we are going to do it. When the time comes, you will just be watching me. And he will do it. Me too, I'll be watching him and he will do it. You'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. As you are being surprised, that's how me too, I'll be saying, ah! So that's how, oh, see this one, God, oh, see what God, God. I don't have a plan, but he has a plan. Your own personal life. Do you know that you yourself were God's project? No, no, you didn't know. Listen. I told you yesterday, God used my children to teach me a lot of things. Sometimes I see my children wear some clothes. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Why do that? Is. That clothes, you are not wearing it. It is here now. Ah, no, no, it's too short. But then I react and say, no, you have outgrown that. This one is torn. No, 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 no. It's faded. No, no, no. I remove them from their body. Why? If anybody see my children poorly dressed outside, you may insult the children. Who do they insult? Have you ever seen a teacher insulting a child because they didn't pay the child's school fees? They may drive the child away, but who do people laugh at? Who is your father? Are you sure? So you think, you think God, you think you are better, a better father than God? That's what you should think. Are you a better father than God? The, re- the only difference is that your children trust you more than you trust your own father. I need that with you today. Your children come to you with absolute trust. You, when you're going to your papa, I don't know whether that God is going to answer me today. I don't even know whether God is going to be able to do this song is my problem. And as the problem is coming, you are already thinking of a thousand and one ways that you can solve that problem. Even you know when you pray, you have already calculated, okay, that is so I can take so so from that one. That's my obvious contribution. I can I stop one pastor from joining contribution because of that. This year, don't do any contribution again. Stop borrowing. <laughs> I 
I'm not telling you some more, but if you heard it in the spirit, then it was you God was talking to you. Trust! That's the way to prosper. Rise up on the There is a power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, It is the Lord that gives you power to get wealth. That power comes when you trust Him. If you are here this evening because you will have our us to pray, if you are here, you are not surrendered to Jesus. Remember, I told you that God will prosper His children. If you are not sure you are a child of God, you can make sure to just run to the altar now. Say, I'm coming to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to be His child. The rest of us will have quick, quick prayers to pray, and it will sharp, 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 so that we can go. But the first one, I want you to admit, just worship Him. You see, if you meet the one of heaven and earth, you will praise Him first. I remember we heard today that we should praise Him. We should even yesterday, we should, we should praise Him. He's the owner, He's the owner of heaven, He's the owner of the earth. The cattle upon a thousand hills belong to Him, He's a rich God. The richest man on that, that, that in the whole of existence is God. He owns the silver, He owns the gold, He owns all the dollars, all the naira. All the different currencies, he owns them. The resources, the oil works is in his hands. Everything is his own. Oh. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. All now, heaven and earth, I worship you. I just worship you. I just worship you. I just worship you. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshiped. In my hurry, I forgot something critical that God told me to tell you. Because this is not almost like nothing to do with the sound on prosperity. He said, forgive everyone who has offended you. It is time to move. Unforgiveness will not let you move. I'm just reading to you what was given to me. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, trespasses neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Satan has positioned some offenders in church. Don't let them destroy you. And God reminded me the story of the Jew that someone offended him so badly, another pastor, and that the father of the church told him to go and beg the man. He said, Daddy is the one that offended that person. Go and beg him. He said, Later the man told the founder, he said, Me, I know I'm going to hell, but I want to take you, the founder, and that will be along with you. That was the reason the man was offending him. I don't have time to explain it again. Don't hold on to any offense. If it is in the church, if it is the pastor that offended you, whether the pastor is here, is no longer here, if you don't let it go, it is you that will suffer. Forgive those people who offended you. Whether they are senior pastors, junior pastors, colleagues, friends, family, forgive them. Listen to the last message. It says, Some gifts are on the altar. This is God talking to me. I have not touched them. Because I am waiting for the givers to forgive those who offended them. When you do it, I will receive the gift and release my blessing. I wrote it down. So I'll give you one minute. Maybe that is even more important than your crime to him because he already knows what he will do. Set your hand for a minute. If there is anybody anywhere in the world that offended you right now, Say, Father, I forgive you. Father, I forgive you. Some may be difficult, but just say, Lord, heal me. Help my heart. Help my heart. Help my heart. I will know the offended body, but I'm letting it go now. Oh, let go, let go, let go. Let go. Say, it's time to move. Unforgiveness will not let you move. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Release it from your heart. I, so simple, I, I forgive you. I know you offended me, but I'm forgiving you, and your family, your place of work. I don't know where you offended you. Let 
critical. C'est pas rien, maman. They say you get a gift is on the road. I don't know how many years that your gift is waiting there. He didn't touch it. He didn't touch it. Oh, my father, help everyone, everyone. I know the people you are speaking to, they know. Help them. So, so many people talk. So, so many people. Release grace to forgive. Receive ability to forgive. Receive grace to forgive now. Receive ability to forgive. Ah, Father, heal their hearts. Heal their wounded hearts. Wounded hearts. Some were wounded by their pastors. Some were wounded by bosses. Some were wounded by friends. Some were wounded by family members. Ah, Father, forgive, forgive. Help them to forgive. Help them to forget. Help them to forgive. Help them to forgive. Them to forgive. Heal their hearts. Do it, Lord. Let this go out of the way. So that the gifts can be accepted and the blessings can come. Oh, thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. Now lift your voice to God and say, Father, destroy every yoke of poverty, of lack, of stagnation, of barrenness, of backwardness in our life. Destroy it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy it. Destroy it. Oh my father and my God. That he has prosperity in my life. Destroy it by the power of your spirit. Destroy it. Chains of darkness preventing my prosperity. Break in the name of Jesus. Satanic yokes will never they come from. Ah, ancestral curses. Hidden prosperity in my life and my family. Break in the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, my father. Every force of darkness working against prosperity in my life, working against progress in my life, working against success in my life, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lift your voice to God and say, Father.
No more fullness of God in my life. No more fullness of God in my life. Almighty God, by your power, I shall prosper. By your power, I shall be fruitful. I shall multiply. I shall possess the land. Yes, Lord, I will succeed in what I do. My Lord and my God, I will trust you and you will prosper me. I will succeed. I will succeed. I will succeed. It shall be well with me. Ah, no more failure. My business will not fail. Amen. Yeah. 